All right, so resilience. We all have an idea of what that is, but until recently, did we truly understand what we need to do to have resilience? The individuals I have today with me are proof that we can thrive while we are surviving. So welcome to today's Meeting with Extraordinary Minds Food Service Re Resilience Edition. I'm Stephanie Bohart, Director of Business Success for Revolution Mortgage. And as always, if you have questions for our panel today, just drop them in the comment section and we will make sure that they get answered for you as soon as we can. Today with us, we have Misty Cohen, owner of the Boathouse and Waterway, or the Boathouse on the Waterway and Lulu's Cafe. We have Bo Steele with Cisco Foods. And we have Tiffany Doolittle, Marketing Director for Dagwood's Deli and Bumstead's Pub. Welcome everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I know it's a crazy time, so we appreciate you taking the time with us today. Um, I wanted to really start and ask you guys, kind of just let me know like how you are doing and how everything's going, but we want to get a, an update on how the food service industry in a whole is going. And Bo, I wanted to start with you because I know that you work, I mean, you're a native here in our area. You work with restaurants, hotels, any food service all the way across the, um, the beach. So you've got a real thumb on what's happening. So if you could just give us an update on how everyone's doing, I mean, I mean, we know obvious how everyone's doing, but if you could just tell us what you're hearing from everybody. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been here my whole life. I've been in the food service industry my whole life and I've been through hurricanes, I've been through recessions and I don't think anything comes close to matching what we're dealing with right now. Um, I don't think any of us could have said six weeks ago that we'd be at this position now. Um, you know, we've got restaurants completely sheltered. We've got some that are doing things uh, like Misty's that are doing things that they don't even normally do. Um, just anything to generate revenue. Uh, one of the positives though is the people that are in the restaurant, they are trying, they are staying positive. The one, the, the customers that I visit, the customers that I do talk to, um, they're trying to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, we at Cisco are doing everything we can to provide services to help. So, you know, it, it's just hard because of the timing of the whole situation. We were, you know, the beach, we rely on the summer and we were just, we were just about there. And then this all happened. So we ne most people wait the winter and then they get their feet underneath them coming into the spring. Unfortunately, those feet have been taken out from underneath them. And that's, I believe that's where the hardest part of this whole thing is going to, if this thing would have hit in September, still just as bad, but maybe we could have got through it a little bit easier. But the problem is these people don't have legs underneath them anymore. Um, so, you know, that's really kind of what I'm seeing right now. I can imagine. I was like, if you're, you know, coming out of a dead of winter where you're kind of low staff, low everything, and you're kind of just slowly start going, and you're at a screeching halt, and then this is going to be lifted, and who knows what's going to happen? Do you get hit with the summer and travel and all that, and you don't have that in between time where it kind of gives a slow uplift? Um, Tiffany, how are you guys doing over there? Like, how are your employees doing? I know you shut down one of your locations, so everyone, you know, how's everyone doing over there? Yeah, absolutely. We're in a unique uh, situation because we have the two locations. So our Surfside one is just a much larger operation. So, and they're not. Um, a traditional, their traditional, you know, sit in dine in restaurant. So it just didn't work. We tried it for the first couple of days um, after it switched over to the curbside. And it was just so many employees that it just didn't make operational sense to do that. Um, and where our original location, downtown Myrtle Beach, it's kind of designed for service. It's, you know, perfect. And that's what people know us for doing the delivery and the, you know, pick up and grab and go um, quick service for the lunch. So we have, you know, bare bones right now of um, the deli crew. Of course, all of our bartenders from the Bumstead Hub at night, um, they're all on unemployment, just like, um, you know, down Surfside. But we do, you know, they stop in, still get their fix of the food and stuff and see their faces. So it's nice to kind of at least have that option um, where we can still have touch base with everybody. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously everyone needs to kind of hold up and do what they can. Missy, how's your cruise doing? Well, we um, we also tried like Tiffany to keep both locations going for a little bit. And then um, when the governor shut down our hotels or um, then it really didn't make much sense to keep Lulu's because we really are a very um, 
tourist based business down there and breakfast is a little bit harder to, uh, you know, if you don't have to go to work every day, you maybe don't want to come out for breakfast every day. So we decided to close down after a couple of weeks and kind of focus our interest over at um, the boathouse. Um, about the time, so my family meal idea was actually an idea that I had a lot of years ago um, that I wanted to start. Um, I'm a mother of two boys, they're older now, but um, that was one of the things that I knew I needed. And so I just kind of, when this came about, I thought, let's kind of switch gears and let's do this. Um, but honestly, things are good. We're all really positive at the restaurant. All my workers have pitched in and, and now we've got managers that are cooking and bagging food and um, people here coming in to answer the phone for us. And, and like you said, Tiffany, it's like a place for us to kind of all check in on each other. Um, we, um, we applied for the PPP loan and um, we were able to get it yesterday. So things are going to change just a little bit for us. But, um, you know, we're just really hopeful that by the time that we come into good season that we'll be open. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, you guys are definitely, that's what the next question was like, how are your businesses staying relevant? I mean, I'm sure trying to get that piece of the takeout business is not easy. And, you know, you're not always, you know, the one that you're dependent on. So Missy, you spoke a little bit on that, but if you want to kind of dive a little bit deeper, I know you started, you guys started the um, family meals. That's what you're saying, but you can kind of talk a little bit about. Yes. Yeah, so so um, basically as the governor was talking about, you know, no dining, dining restaurants. Um, I was on my app doing the ordering for to go, uh, to go items because I knew that was going to be the next thing. And uh, obviously we had heard from all the um, neighboring states around that this was kind of coming. So um, to be able to get a piece of that takeout market, you've got to have supplies. And thankfully to um, my, my food purveyors, I was able to get all the supplies I needed. And, um, you know, went in and pitched it to everybody. I was like, look, how about we do family style meals that are affordable that, you know, you can drive in, pick up and go. Um, you know, at the boathouse, we are brewery and, um, and we have concerts and things like that. And so, you know, we had to kind of shift and say, well, if we can't make money here, how can we make money? Um, and so, you know, right now we're plugging along, um, growlers, we're selling growlers out, but, um, with each new thing, you get a new problem. So not everybody in the country are selling growlers. So guess what? There's no growlers. Yeah. So now we have to like scramble every day on Amazon to order, you know, I got to order my maximum. Can you order your maximum? And, and then, you know, stickers for the growlers. So every time that we, we think, oh, here we got, we got an idea. Then we're like, oh, okay, now we've got to make this work. So um, I say that this is probably the hardest I've ever worked for the amount of money that we're bringing in, but, um, but we're all working together. You know, you have to have a really strong crew and I'm thankful to my crew that we're, everybody's really adapt, um, adapting to the change because when you come in and say, hey, we're going to change the way we do business, it kind of scares everybody a little bit. And, and, and thank goodness, everybody's kind of going with me. Um, Bo and I have been friends for 10 years and he checks in on us and um, he and Sherry are really uh, visionaries. And so we kind of like bounce ideas off each other and, um, and just keep plugging along. I think positive attitude is really the key because when you start yeah. getting down, that's when, that's when things start going bad. Yeah, I agree with that. Tiffany, I know you guys, I mean, you have always been a great mind in the marketing world and kind of putting stuff out there. So, I mean, has it changed? I mean, a little bit, I mean, you're staying relevant. I know. I mean, I see you on the curbside stuff and, you know, kind of, how are you? I mean, I'm sure you're really busy trying to keep all of that moving and going and staying in front of people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like Missy said, she's got managers cooking. I'm working inside the deli, you know what I mean? So everybody's kind of taking on new roles. Um, and so it's a little bit of balance. I'll have my laptop out, you know, on one of the tables. And so in between during the slow times after the lunch rush, I'll go over there and start, you know, trying to create. And that's what, you know, it's a balance too. So the handful of minds that are in here, we're like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? It's a constant evolution, you know, and changing uh, with it. So that's what I've seen the family meals that Misty have been doing. And then we switched a couple of weeks ago. We started doing by the pound and treating it like a true deli. So an alternative for like the grocery store where they could get the cheese and the meats and our homemade sides. So that was something that, you know, has definitely been working for us um, the last few weeks. That's been pretty, you know, popular. People can at least take it um, home. And especially this last weekend, we switched where we stopped on Saturdays because same thing for us. It was 
offices and, you know, the banks that are still open, some of those essentials, those are coming in for lunch and, you know, keep maintaining us. Or we'll see the, you know, city workers that are public works and fire and police. And so that's been awesome that those guys are still supporting us and we can, you know, still keep a pulse on the community that way. Yeah. With the pound and all that, I want to know, um, are you selling the cookies by the dozen? <laughs> um, uh, we haven't yet, but like I said, today's a new day. We can start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if anyone's had their cookies, especially hot, fresh Wednesdays when they come. I mean, they're probably by far the best cookies, chocolate chip cookies I've had. Yeah, and that's what every day we kind of some days we've had to do a second round in the afternoon, just depending on, you know, what we go through. But yeah. it's been good. Well, Missy, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, I mean, you guys relied heavily, I mean, I imagine on your live music. I mean, they bring in such big crowds. I mean, how, I mean, I, I've seen a little bit on social media how you guys are kind of trying to stay relevant with that. Can you speak a little on that? Um, right, we're doing concerts um, via live Facebook, I guess is how we're streaming those. Um, uh, Trip and Jason, they, they really take care of keeping people lined up um, to kind of entertain us. And um, he's actually going to work now. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, so we have been having concerts and, um, we're really hopeful that we will be able to, since we're an outdoor venue, that we'll be able to come back with our concerts pretty quickly after this is over with, but, um, you know, we're all stuck in the house. So, you know, it's a good way to sit back, enjoy a growler of our beer, um, listen to, uh, listen to the concerts and the comfort of your own home. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I love dumb music. Like it's always nice to be able to put on some live music regardless. I mean, we have music playing in the house all the time, but it's a little bit different when you have someone live and they're talking. And I mean, the musicians are definitely hurting now as well. So they want to stay relevant. They want to remind the restaurants in the area, like we're here, please, you know, bring us out when you can and, and help their, their music stay alive too. Yeah. And, and it really cool on Facebook, you can communicate with them. You know, you can send them a little message and they're communicating back with the people. So they're asking for, um, for uh, requests and, and answering questions. And that kind of goes to uh, what we're gonna do this summer. We've got a new, um, uh, a new series that we're gonna call um, Grown, Homegrown in the Garden. And so it's a more intimate setting. So this is really a good kickoff for us on that um, where you can interact with the artist. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's exciting. And I mean, it's a great time to kind of create and think about those ideas. Yeah. So speaking of reinventing and, you know, kind of creating new ideas, Bo, how about you, will you tell us some of the ways that you've gotten to um, reinvent some of the business inside your clients, restaurants and businesses and then outside? Yeah. So, you know, again, we at Cisco obviously service the restaurants, mainly the hotels, and everything. And when everything shut down, it was kind of like a, oh, boy, what are we going to do? We've never had this problem before. So, you know, our, we have great leadership. They really stepped up and said, hey you know, we've got, to, we've got to think outside the box. That's what they said. They said, guys, start thinking ways you've never thought before. We've got guys selling to grocery stores, going around, had a lot of luck there out in, in independent grocery stores. Um, here at the beach, uh, our marketing team came up with um, an idea called a pop-up shop. And a pop-up shop is a mobile market inside of, a, or it's a, it's a market inside of a restaurant where a lot of these people are going to get takeout already. And instead of going to get takeout and then having to run over to the grocery store, some of your essentials like toilet paper, paper towels, sanitizer, and all that are available in the restaurant for you when you get your takeout. So you can just go and go get your takeout, get your toilet paper and go on home. And that's been a huge success. Uh, Sean down in Crafty Rooster in Conway, uh, that has been huge for him. Um, a, a lot of it's got to do with how close your proximity is to um, grocery stores. So it works more for some than it does others, but it's definitely been an outside the box thought. And then another customer I have, um, they're, they've been extremely hurting uh, through this whole thing, obviously. Um, and we were just, we talk almost daily and we came up with an idea that there's a lot of people right now that just do not want to go to the grocery store. Um, and even more so now than, you know, two or three weeks ago, but we decided to go with this. We, we ended up kicking the name around and it's called Gosheries Mobile Market. And 
uh, the owner, Jay Harward, has a 43-foot trailer that we converted into this mobile grocery store. And through the help of um, my wife, she is uh, helping doing messages on Facebook, uh, putting a schedule together and um, making sure that, you know, we're where we need to be. And these guys have four or five locations a day to go to. And um, sales have been very good, but more than the sales is the appreciation of the people that we've been bringing the, the, the thing to. Mm-hmm. The people have been so overwhelmingly uh, happy that, you know, hey, I don't have to go to the store. I, I can do this. And a lot, it's a lot of elderly folks, a lot of people like that. But, um, you know, it's just right now we've all got to do that. And it doesn't stop when this is over, because when Tiffany reopens and Misty reopens, the doors can't just fly open and it's back to normal. Um, things aren't going to just flow like they did before. We've had employees off almost 60 days. Um, they're going to come back lethargic, you know, forgetting how they did things. Um, it, it's going to be a transition. Folks aren't going to want to pile in restaurants on top of each other. How are you going to adjust to that? So where we're at now with the transition, it's just going to continue on through this whole process. So you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long, a long period, but that's what we're here for. We're here to just kind of try to help people along and come up with different ideas because otherwise we are going to go down. We're all going to go down, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I mean, and those are amazing ideas. I mean, who would have ever thought like to put toilet paper and paper towels and stuff like that right there in a bar restaurant (laughs) where you can go get your food, get your growler and grab your toilet. I mean, all one stop. I mean, And what you're saying is a lot of people, I mean, I honestly, I've not been out. I think I've gone, I went to Costco one time and we've done a few grocery pickups, but other than that, I, cause I'm, I'm home with my girls and I don't want to take them into a store, you know, two and six, they touch everything. So to be able to quickly grab things or send my husband to get something, I don't want him in stores as much as possible. So that's awesome. And the grocery, we have, we have come out and did it. We actually, bought some chicken wings from them and made them last night. They were phenomenal. And we got them outside, you know, in our neighborhood. We didn't have to go far. It was probably one of the best thing, like ideas that I've seen come out of this. And I mean, that just goes to you guys and Cisco and, and your partners kind of working together and really trying to figure out what the best is for, for our community. And that's one that I think that will last a long time in the area. But Bo did touch on something. And I wanted to ask you two, Tiffany and Missy, it was like, what do you think this is? How is this going to change how you do business on a daily basis, like inside the restaurant? Does this change, you know, when you have concerts? Does this change when you have trivia nights? Does it change, you know, how you try to, I mean, we all knew before, I was like, I've been in the restaurant industry before too, is you want to pack people in. But are people going to want to be packed in? Tiffany, do you want to touch on that first? Yeah, I we've had this conversation probably on the daily um, of just, you know, changes that we've made in the deli just from operating that, that when we do open the bar, how is that going to work? You're going to have bar stools that holds 40 or people going to want to sit there. I don't, I mean, I don't know how we necessarily prepare for that. It's still, we're going to find out as the course of time over the next few weeks, we're just going to keep seeing a daily change and we're just going to have to respond accordingly of how people want to come. But then they've also have been cooped up and I, you know, to get out and to get social. I think people have a real appreciation for not only you're craving the food of a certain restaurant, but you are now realize you pay for that atmosphere. Um, and, you know, they really appreciate that community coming together. Like they're getting that, you know, realization. Right. Well, and I can imagine, I, mean, I know, I mean, we know our friends, I mean, just your friends, you're going and you're going to meet with your friends there and you, you don't feel like they're strangers. You don't feel like they're people that you should do it. So, you know, as much as people say like, is a handshake going to still be your way of saying hello? Is a hug going to be the way you're saying hello? You feel like no, but when you finally see people that you haven't seen in so long, like you're going to want to embrace them. And it's going to be like, wait, in the awkward moment. And then you just, you, I I could imagine I will have a hard time with that. Like I would go for it, <laughs> but let's right. see. How about you guys, Misty? I mean, I'm sure you guys are making some plans for the future here. Well, I, we have such a big outdoor space that, you know, I'm hopeful that people will be able to come out there and social distance, you know, like you said, meet up at a table with your friends, but we've still got a lot of area to, to stay apart. Um, one thing that I have, I've changed, 
um, I have a bag of white, uh, Lysol wipes in my purse at all times. And, you know, I am using those for my protection. And I kind of think that individuals who are really worried about that, they're going to keep doing this continually on this change the way that, you know, we individually live. And um, so I think that we'll be still afraid of germs, but like you said, we've been cooped up in the house for a long time that, you know, we're going to come back out after a while and things will get back to normal and we'll just kind of, um, maybe in a year, we'll be back to hugging and handshaking like, like nothing ever happened. But I think for a little bit, we're just going to have to navigate these waters and um, use a lot of Clorox and Lysol and, and clean, 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 clean. Yeah. What I wanted to ask you, I was like, I know, I mean, I've watched your live. I was like that you were going to move and, you know, open a new location. How, how, I mean, that's how that? be something. <laughs> I mean, working through trying to figure all of that out. What, uh, what are your plans there? Um, so back in 2009, when the bottom fell out of the market, I ended up with this piece of land down on Ocean Boulevard. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck here. You know, I need to build something and I need to build a business and make this work. And so then last year at the end of the year, I started thinking about moving and, um, <clears throat> the economy's so good. Everything's great. This time I'm going to build without, without concern about, I, I, can I, can I get this little fixture? Can I get that fixture? So, um, I was really excited about everything. And, um, so went out and bought myself a new piece of property and, um, we signed on a, on, um, a note for that. And then guess what? <laughs> We're shut down. We have no income. So all of a sudden I'm back to 2009 again. Um, we're, you know, worried about these new things and how am I going to build this? And um, now I am sitting with two mortgages for the next year. Um, so I won't say that hasn't been trying. It has been trying, but I find that in these times, um, I think I do my best thinking and my best um, problem solving. And, and we're really excited. We really are. The plans are going to come out. Um, we're very, very close to having the plans finished. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get all those little touches that I wanted. Um, all the extra, the restaurant people understand this, all the extra floor drains and <laughs> the water hoses to clean, you know, those really glamorous things that I want. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm really hopeful and, and we actually are in the process of, of um, finishing those plans. And I'm, I'm really excited. I can't say too much, but I'm really excited to kind of share those and have something to look forward to. And so maybe that's what this is just kind of keeping out there on the horizon, keeping our eyes focused out there and not right here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, and it's good. I mean, it's time to plan and it's time to get ready and you have yeah. something to look forward to, which I think everyone is looking forward to looking forward to something. <laughs> um, yeah. and I'm really you excited over. about the downtown yeah, I'm really excited about the downtown area. Um, and I, I think that this is a great time. You know, we're in the roaring 20s again. So this is a great time for things to kind of come up. And um, and I do think people appreciate the bars and the restaurants and the social atmospheres, the beer gardens. Um, so I think this is probably a great decade to start something like this. Yeah, well, and it sounds like it's something, I mean, I know Lewis, you know, as is, is way more, you know, attracted by the tourists that come into town, right. but this sounds like a little bit more of a way to have a better blend, um, in right. that location. This will be a community, uh, this will be a community feel, and, um, we're gonna, um, I could probably say this, we're gonna move the brewery over there. Okay. So this is going to be a complex for the whole thing. We've kind of outgrown our space at the boathouse. And um, so we will have two sites that we'll be able to brew our beer. And um, and so this will be more of a beer garden. Yes. Okay. And, um, little outdoor dining space for us. Well, we love to have those, you know, tidbits released on here. So I love that. Um, <laughs> the first time and I hate, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have said that. But I'm going to get a job as an investigative reporter after this because I can just pull it right up. <laughs> but I think we're close enough now um, to say that we, we are um, trying to get the piece of property next to this and then that, that's where the brewery will be. And, um, and we'll have just a little downtown complex. And I have been in touch with other business owners down there who are working on getting some other little things opened up on that street too. So like I said, we're looking out on the horizon, keeping our heads up, keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love that. <clears throat> so I wanted to ask, um, so Bo, I know you touched on this before a little bit, but just, you know, kind of changing the way that we're doing things. Like, how do you see, you know, some of these, I mean, there's a lot of restaurants that 
the tables are so close together that, you know, do you think that people are going to be taking some of those out? You know, I, I actually wrote a letter this morning to a, a bunch of my customers, um, you know, kind of trying to, we need to start thinking about that. We don't know. It's kind of like I just heard the girls say, um, both of them said, that, you know, I think people are cooped up and they want to come out. Um, but at the same time, how are they going to, how is it going to be perceived? I mean, are we going to want to, you know, so if you, if you go to a restaurant where they're, you know, they're stacked on top of each other or a, a buffet or something like that, people may perceive those differently now than they did before. Um, so I, I think you are going to see some changes, but obviously, you know, it's got to be to where these, these folks can have the, the revenues coming in to be able to survive. You can't remove, you know, 50% of your tables to make people comfortable if that's your revenue going out the door and you can't afford to stay open. So it's, it's going to be a, a pendulum there. You got to balance out. Um, and that's going to be the tricky part. When you touch on that, I didn't even think about like the buffets, like how, I mean, where people are coming through and they're using the same utensils. So, you know, put on things. Yeah. How, I mean, they're going to have to kind of work through be. some things there. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, we don't, we don't know how DHEC's going to come out of this. You know, we've all, you know, DHEC's gone to this virtual tour thing or whatever, but you know, what regulations, I mean, DHEC's already hard enough as it is now on these restaurant people. Um, I see it on a daily basis. I fought many of fights with owners uh, to try to, you know, get them passed and everything. I expect to see even more strenuous, you know, things come along from DHEC. And it, it could, again, can make things very difficult for these folks. I mean, I mean, just look at the glove thing. I, I guess it's been two, maybe three years now with the gloves. If somebody, I mean, they can elaborate on how much money they spend on gloves a year in their businesses and not they didn't buy them before, but they didn't buy them to where somebody was changing them 25 times a day like they are now. Um, there's some places that, you know, buy more gloves in a year now than they had bought in the previous 20 years they've been open. Um, so you can expect to see changes like that. I, I guarantee DHEC's having meetings right now to discuss um, how are we going to keep society, you know, everybody safe, make people feel comfortable and all these types of things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would, I mean, it's definitely something that you got to have plans for and, and think about. So let's think, let's just talk about future a little bit and you can talk about, you know, the community and how they can give you guys support. Um, Tiffany, you guys have anything coming up that you, you know, want or you, what messages you want to get out or how can we support you guys best? Yeah, I mean, like it is always word of mouth is, you know, our best friend. Um, we do have something tonight actually with uh, WMBF. Um, they have started, um, today will be the initial one, but they're going to do on each week Thursdays mm -hmm. trivia with Jamie Arnold. Um, and they have different sponsors. So this week, uh, Anchor Mobile Storage is sponsoring it to support the restaurants. Um, so mm -hmm. the top 10 winners will get gift certificates for us. Um, but all being taken care of through um, anchor storage. So that's pretty awesome. So it's just a short, um, tonight's topic is weather. So that's at, at 8 p.m. through Facebook Live on WM News. Um, and then we've been reaching out and getting with some local companies that are of course all about um, feeding the essential workers, whether it be grocery stores or the hospitals or one thing or another. So we've had a couple different um, local companies kind of step up and reach out to us and get box lunches so that we can deliver to Grand Strand and different areas there. So that's pretty cool um, that's spreading on. But then other than that, it's just our, you know, deli by the meats by the pound and our full menu is still available. So come down and see us. What I will say is um, we've gotten takeout from a lot of places. You know, a lot of places aren't built for takeout. You know, they're trying their best, but you get the food home and it's not, it's, you know, you did your part to support them, but it's not always the best. But I will say is we have had takeout from the both of you and they were probably our two best takeouts. I was like, they were, the food was still good. It was still crispy. It was still, you know, intact. Um, Missy, we had your chicken bog and I mean, everybody loved that. Mm. And so, you know, it was a great night and the collards were my favorite. I was like, you know, it's not something you get every day. And so that right. was a a surprise you know to really really enjoy those so um i appreciate both of you guys and what you guys have been doing and um definitely get it out and i love that there's businesses that are you know still trying obviously still feeding their employees for sure and that they're not coming to you where these um 
agencies aren't coming to you asking you, because you know that before, if they were going to do trivia, they would have came to you and said, will you donate $25 coupon? And it's like, no, we, that's not really what we're doing right now. We're trying to bring money in. We're not donating it out. So that other businesses are getting involved to support in that manner, which is great. Yeah. We've had to reinvent ourselves on a daily. And so now that's just going to trickle out and, you know, everybody else is going to have the same. And so it's cool that they've, you know, found a way to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, what about you, uh, Misty? How can we help you guys help support you? What you have coming up? Well, every day we post our menu, our family menu on Facebook. Um, and we try to do a little bit further out, but, um, you know, right now, as Bo can probably say that, uh, supply is, you know, kind of ebbs and flows, um, where, um, obviously we've all heard about the cork plants shutting down and, um, the prices are going high. We're trying to keep our, our family meals at $30 for six people. So, um, so every day we kind of have to shop and find out what we can, what we can kind of do. Um, but we're posting that on Facebook and we still have the majority of our menu um, that you can get from us. But our best way to call is just call us um, 903 boat and talk to one of the friendly, friendly people that are answering the phone up there and um, just kind of talk about what we have. Um, and we have had some of uh, our businesses reach out to us. So we fed the hospital uh, Grand Strand and mm -hmm. I think we're feeding a Conway Medical Center on Monday. And um, so it is nice that we we're all, everybody's working together right now to, you know, make yeah. sure these essential workers are getting some good food and, um, and just helping each other. You know, that's one of the things when I got the call, it's like, I just wanted to support a local business. Um, and I guess all the businesses in Myrtle Beach are really local businesses because we, we employ local people and um, the money stays in our community. But I'm really thankful for everybody who's ordered from us because, you know, my family, that's my main concern is my family and how to keep them up. So uh, we appreciate. And, and I want to say this, that my family is not necessarily people who live in this house. Um, the family is the people that we have worked with for 10, 15 years. You know, we, we're all a good, good, um, cohesive group and we fight and argue like family, but we also make up and love like family. You know, we, we really have a strong bond. Um, so we appreciate, um, everybody who's, who's come out and tipped and spent money with us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Bo, um, where can we find your, uh, you know, your grocery market? How can we support some of your, your clients working through this time? Well, well, the Ghost Room Mobile Market has its Facebook page and you can follow it and um, it'll give you the daily schedule and the daily menu they're putting out. Um, I'll say that, you know, because again, I know this is, we're going into week six weeks where well, we're through week six going into week seven. Even if you cannot afford to eat out, social media is about all the advertisement we got right now. We're all cooped up. We're all stuck. Share these people's pages. I, that's If you look at my Facebook, it has turned into nothing but just sharing these folks um, pages, trying to help them out. That's what you need to do. That's that. That's it's, it's almost like the, hey, donate anything you can type thing. If you can't afford to go eat with them, sharing it so somebody else that might see it and they can afford to go out and eat and helping them out means just as much. So um, there's that. And then there's also another page that a uh, um, Cisco rep actually created um, on Facebook, it's uh, Grand Strand Curbside to go to, and delivery. Uh, Danielle created that and she did a great job. She's got over 4,000 followers now. I know a lot of people are sharing their specials and things to that page. So that's another great follow on, on Facebook and you'll, you'll see a lot of these local uh, businesses on there as well. Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, we're wrapping up here. So I just wanted to um, go back around real quick. And if you guys want to just give your social media or your phone number or where you're located, just so that people know exactly where to um, connect with you. And then we'll also share those on to um, the feed of this um, broadcast. So Tiff, you want to start? Sure. Um, you can find us at Dagwoods Deli. Myrtle Beach is our location that is open. And then uh, phone number you can reach us at is 448- 0100 open 11 to 6 Monday through Friday. Fantastic. Misty? Um, we are the landing at the boat house on uh, Facebook and we have um, we are here every day from 
uh, 11 30 12 o'clock until about seven o'clock when um when everybody's picked up their orders you can pre-order so you can call it 11 o'clock and go ahead and say hey i want to come by and pick up my dinner at five o'clock and we will have it ready for you at five o'clock um so that really is a big thing pre-order so you can already know that dinner's done um and then you can call us at 903 boat easy easy all right bo give the grocery market again uh, it's uh, Ghostry Mobile Market. It's right on Facebook. Do you um, do you know where they're going to be at today? Uh, today they're well, they're in Sacristy right now. They're going to be down at 544 uh, Carolina Lakes around noon, and then they go over to um, the Baptist Church in Sacristy, I believe, on 707. And if I'm wrong about that, I, I could be. So I'm, I'll <laughs> in a second. And I'm sure they're still looking for more neighborhoods to service all around our area. Correct. Yes, you can message that page and they're they're absolutely looking for areas. Uh, unfortunately, there's only so many hours in a day, but um, you know, it's it's really about the, the, the neighborhoods that need it is where we're trying to get to, so. Yeah, I imagine. All right, well, thank you guys all so much. I know that you're busy and you know, working inside your restaurants probably way more than you even were before. So I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. I hope you guys all have a great day. I um, want to thank everybody that is viewing these. Again, if you have any suggestions on a meeting with Extraordinary Minds or you are an Extraordinary Mind yourself and want to get on here and share what's going on um, with you or your business, we would love that. So just message us at uh, Carolina Revolution Myrtle Beach uh, on Facebook um, and then join us Tuesdays and Thursdays at 910 for our next editions of um, Meetings with Extraordinary Minds. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. Get out there and support your restaurants. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Bye.